Now the king, we're going to talk a little bit about a king. The king stood before the people. The people of the entire nation, as they, they watched, hands of the prophet were placed on his head. It had finally come. The day when the throne and the crown and the whole country, the whole nation, was given into his hands. Years had passed since he was actually first anointed to be king. He had been through so many battles, through so many enemies that he had fought. There were times when he felt quite alone, vulnerable to attack. But through every test and every battle, he kept the thought of this day in his mind. A psalm, a psalm was written to record the event and to give praises to God for granting the king all that had been promised to him. Let's turn over to Psalm chapter 21. In Psalm chapter 21, we get to read this, this song, or at least part of this song that was recorded for quite a special event. In verse 1, it says, The king shall have joy in your strength, O Lord, and in your salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you meet with him, for you meet him with the blessings of goodness. You set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked life from you, and you gave it to him, length of days, forever and ever. It's a beautiful beginning to it, a song. Our Heavenly Father offers us so many blessings, doesn't he? So many wonderful gifts. Some he gives to us now, some he holds for us for later. He freely offers up so much, even a crown of glory and eternal life, as like described in this song. And once we taste of that goodness of his blessings, we always desire more. And we should, we should desire those wonderful blessings that he has prepared for us, that he wants us to receive. But all too often we forget about the trials that accompany blessings. In many cases, the trials that come before those blessings that we receive. We pray and ask Him daily for what we need and the desires of our heart, but sometimes we do forget about those, those trials. Sometimes we forget about that refinement process that God uses to prepare us to receive those blessings. All too often we forget that fact that trials do accompany these blessings. Now, the psalm mentioned a crown of gold, of pure gold, it would be. Pure gold that's used in fine jewelry or in such a crown, it must go through a process of refinement before it actually becomes pure. And when it comes to the modern processes of, pro of refining gold or different precious metals, uh, gold must be melted down several times, not just once and it's done but it has to be melted down multiple times as the impurities within it are separated out and burned up. If you have ever seen a piece of gold ore, it looks more like just a, some rock that you'd find. Sometimes you get some shiny bits, but mostly it's just some, some useless rocks, but you have to separate out the gold. Now in today's modern processes, even chemicals are used. Chemicals continue to further separate out other metals from the gold itself. Metals that might be useful for other purposes, but they're not gold, so they have to be, they have to be separated out. Now, the fire that's needed to melt metals and to burn up the impurities is unbearably hot. You couldn't reach out and, and grab the gold while it's in the middle of that fire, or even you know, staying too close. The people who work it in the refinement process have to wear special equipment. I've stood close to, to fires before, and I've burned my hands many, many times. I didn't have the proper equipment on. The refiner's fire reaches much higher temperatures than I've ever experienced. I remember the most painful burn that, that I have ever experienced. So maybe it was, it was so painful because I was young. Uh, I had, I had uh, collected some gunpowder. You know, you're supposed to collect gunpowder from all your leftover firecrackers after the 4th of July. I don't know if you know this. 
But this is what I used to do for fun when I was when I was young on that that day anyway. And I had I had a pile of gunpowder, and I'd set a fuse next to it, and I lit the fuse. It was a, kind of a long fuse, and it was gonna you know light up, and it was gonna be great. We weren't gonna be that close, so we wouldn't be hurt. We tried it before. But at the last moment, I noticed, oh, the fuse, the end of the fuse is not in the gunpowder. So I reached in with my hand. I don't remember which hand it is. But I reached in with my hand, and I moved that fuse over, and it worked. Poof! It burned my whole hand. I cried myself to sleep that night with my hand in a bowl of ice water. I don't, I don't know if that's the, the hottest fire I've ever burned myself on, but that's at least the most memorable. But still, this refiner's fire is hotter than that. Now, before the final shaping of this precious metal, a refiner is left with a very fine gold sand. And that's probably the, the purest form, is that gold sand. But even in, in that purest form, the gold is not yet useful. It still must go through one last melting process so that it can be shaped, so that it can be molded into what it's intended to become. Now, this refining process that God puts us through can be equally as painful, equally as, as intense for us as this refiner's fire that the gold has to go through multiple times, over and over, being thrown through fiery trials we see in our lives. The contents of our own hearts carefully scrutinized so much that we are forced to get rid of the parts of ourselves that don't belong that aren't gold, that aren't refined, that aren't precious to God. And still God is not finished with us yet, as long as we're still living and breathing. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, we have some instructions here, some, a little bit of caution, a little bit of warning. We'll read in verse 11, it says, My son... We can think of it as God talking to his children here. My children, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. We're not supposed to, to hate God's chastening, the trials that he puts us through, the refinement process, nor detest his correction. The correction that God gives us is part of this refinement process as well. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. You can see the love that God has in us, even in correction. Sometimes gentle correction, sometimes gentle nudging in the right direction, sometimes harsh, but always done in love, in a way that helps his children to grow. This is the process of our perfecting. We're not supposed to try to shy away from it or hide from it. Although the standards for all of humanity are the same in the eyes of God, he works with us individually. He tailors that refinement process for each one of us, specifically to us, because he knows what's going to benefit each one individually. He knows how far to push us in the right direction, when to let back and, and to, to take things easy. He understands these things about us. And we cry out to God for those blessings, but do we ever ask God for those trials, for those tests? Do we ever ask him to test us, to try us, to scrutinize us from the inside out? Do we ask God to shape us into something useful for Him? Let's turn to another Psalm, Psalm 139. And we have another Psalm written by the same King who wrote the other Psalm that we read, Psalm 21 in the beginning. If we drop down to the end of Psalm 139, in verse 23, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. That word try could also be translated as test. Examine. Try me and know my anxieties. Know what's inside of me. Know my strengths and my weaknesses and see if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. You see, that way everlasting, eternal life, that doesn't come until after the refinement process. Now, the same King David that wrote, wrote both of these, we see him being able to rejoice with a crown on his head, a physical crown, 
but also knowing that he must be searched. That refinement process for him wasn't over yet, at the end, you know, towards the end of his life even. God had many tests left for him. God wanted to, to continue to work with this man who, even though he was known as a man after God's own heart, he still had work that needed to be done. He knew that before he could receive that length of days forever and ever, that he needed that, that process of refinement. Before he could receive that crown of gold, or that crown that was greater than that crown of gold, he needed this, this testing. Now it took great trust in God on David's part to reach out to him, to ask him to help him to be refined, to look into his heart, to admit that he had been wrong, to admit that he needed work still. It's a humble request and a humbling endeavor to be tried by God. Whenever we go through trials and we don't know the reason why, it's very humbling. It takes a lot of humility and a lot of faith to stay the course through those, those processes, through that refinement process. And often we find ourselves discouraged and we think, why am I going through this? Why am I faced with this fiery trial? I didn't ask for this. Sometimes we forget to ask for those things and expect them. And we must remember that along with the blessings that we receive and that we will receive, God also has promised us chastening, correction, refinement. He wants to test the materials we are made of and to help us to grow, to shape us. He wants to prepare his children to, re to receive his spirit and also to be crowned his children, his heirs. Not only should we be asking for those blessings, but we should also be humbly seeking God's refinement in our lives, expecting the fiery trials that push us beyond our human limits. So when the kingdom is finally here, with the proper refinement like that gold, we will be ready to receive that crown that will be placed on our head.